Welcome to Between Heaven and Earth, an internet radio talk show where we help you connect spirit and divine guidance. Lisa Kay, your host, brings you shows that can enhance and transform your life with tips and new ideas for more happiness, abundance, and better relationships. Lisa is an expert on intuition and can show you how to strengthen your inner guidance to empower yourself. Each show is positive and uplifting to inspire your day. Her guest speakers are specialists on self-help, positive thinking, spirituality, and conscious living. Be the best that you can be with Between Heaven and Earth, conscious living for your soul. And angel blessings to everyone. Our show today is called, Are Men and Women Truly Equal? Women increasingly have more education and higher earning capacity than men. They don't wait for Prince Charming, but actively initiate relationships. They're firefighters, warriors, welders, and CEOs. It's almost as if they're taking over what used to be reserved only for men. They now have an identity through their careers. But on the other hand, what about women who gave up their careers and are stay-at-home moms? What, what is their identity? And what about the men who want to spend more time at home? or both men and women who want a family and a career. The world has changed, and both men and women become confused on how to be. Jim Ewing is here today to talk to us about how to be a guy or a gal in a way that works. Jim Pathfinder Ewing is an award-winning journalist, workshop leader, inspirational speaker, and author in the fields of mind-body medicine, organic farming, and eco-spirituality. He has written about, talked, and lectured on Reiki, shamanism, spiritual ecology, integrative medicine, and Native American spirituality for decades. His book, Redefining Manhood, A Guide for Men and Those Who Love Them, helps us define ourselves based on a spiritual and common sense principles that have guided humankind in societies around the globe for thousands of years. Welcome, Jim. It's so great to have you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, th- this is such an interesting uh, topic. You know, when when I first looked at the book, quite frankly, Redefining Manhood, I thought, well, I'm a woman. You know, what what do I care? <laughs> and, um, but then as I got into it and we talked, I'm like, wow, this is like so important, not just to, for men, but for for women and uh, for myself. Uh, you know, it really sparked a lot in me. And also I you know, sharing it out there on uh, Facebook, I've gotten lots of, a few comments out there, you know, it sparks, it sparks a lot of thought and, and discussion. So, you know, I have my first question, now that I've given an introduction uh, about the topic for you, is, is it, is it really the men who are at fault? It's hard to say the men who are at fault. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Did I catch you? (laughs) Being a guy? (laughs) You're talking on that one. Uh, I, in, in the book is, let me go back just a little bit and say why I wrote the book and what, what the purpose of the book is, if I may. And maybe that might explain yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about that. Where did it all come from? What happened was, I, you know, I've been giving workshops for years on, on various subjects. And um, about three years ago, I was contacted by the Mississippi Homestead Center in Starkville. I live in Mississippi. And uh, the head of it, uh, a lady by the name of Allison Bueller, had had several women's workshops that were very popular and um, and people really enjoyed them. And she said, "Why don't you do one, uh, a workshop for men, a retreat?" And I said, "Well, let me look into it and see what." Uh, so, what did she- you do in these women's workshops? What kinds of things? Now you got uh, to choose. I'm not a woman. I wasn't there. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's relating, talking, uh, sharing. Um, speaking about issues that are important to them, uh, ways that uh, they feel they are both empowered and ways they are disempowered, you know, generally such as that, uh, interpersonal as well as a very personal and a sharing and learning. Mm-hmm. And so you know, I have a pretty good idea from what they tell me. But so anyway, I thought, well, uh, let me look into it and see what I find. So I looked into the literature and so forth, and I actually spoke to other men who, who give workshops. And um, and after thinking about it, looking at, at it uh, and seeing what was available, 
I decided, I told her I couldn't do it. She said, why? And I said, well, there's no uh, books on the subject that I agree with that I think that what is available, the types of workshops and so forth are going down the wrong path mm-hmm. that uh, they, you know, this iron John business about, you know, being, you know, a warrior and, and strong and powerful and, and There's even guy, right. That, that's, stuff, that would about, be a man's thing, right? Yeah. It's being, uh, you know, it talks to even women as being treating women as being uh, separate and, and crazy. Even it, it mentions mm-hmm. that. And, <laughs> and I thought, well, this is this is bizarre. I said, this, you know, I don't believe that, you know, because I believe that we are human beings first, and that we uh, that we share our world and our lives, and and so why why would you you want to separate uh, men from women? Why why the emphasis on division and discord when instead you should be looking at, in my opinion, uh, what we share and, as well as our differences and see where we find common ground and can support each other. So. Uh, so I told her I couldn't do it. Well, uh, she came back and came back and came back. And, and finally, she said, uh, Jim, uh, you know, it sounds like you're the one who needs to write the book, you know, on, on how it's different. And I said, well, I don't know, and uh, like this. And she said, well, what am I going to teach my sons? Uh-huh. And that really struck home with me because uh-huh. I thought about it. And I said, well, you know, my name is Jim Pathfinder, you ain't in Pathfinder was a name that was given to me by Katoa, a uh, medicine man, spiritual elder, and it's one who uh, shows the best, best and highest path. And it's a name for one who has been down many paths and one who can show, you know, wrong ways to go as well as uh, right ways to go based on experience. And it's a name that's given, has been held by other people, and you're you're judged by how well you fulfill that name. It's, you have to do it. You have to be it. And I thought, well, I can't, I'm not much of a pathfinder if I'm afraid of, <laughs> of writing a book <laughs> about saying what I believe is the way that, for people to go. So I told her, I said, I'll do it. And I did it really for Allison Bueller. That's uh, because oh. she, said she wanted something to teach. She needed something to teach her son. Son, sure. And so that was what got me going, got me started. And I looked at uh, the literature, both for women's and men's uh, courses and so forth. And in fact, this book is being marketed uh, in universities for gender studies uh, because it does give an overview both of, of men's and women's uh, uh, gender type of uh, treat- treatments. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I kept finding again and again was it, it really, uh, a lot of it, uh, came about from the previous book I'd written, Conscious Food, in which I detailed the, the birth of agriculture. You know, women invented agriculture. And mm, yes, they were so, the ones that um, men went out and hunted and women stayed home, and and I guess they, exactly. they tended the, and the when farm. People <laughs> settled, when people settled, and they created uh, food and surplus, and then the men took over and used used war for scarcity and lack, uh, as, to, as for power and building dynasties and so forth. So, uh, yeah, you can look at you can look at uh, general trends regarding uh, male attributes, what are considered to be male at- attributes, and what are considered to be female attributes. And some of the strongest female attributes, which I think are community building, are found in, in Native America, where when the first uh, white people, colonial uh, Europeans, came. Uh, to the Americas, they found that it was matrilineal and matrifocal, meaning that at least on the eastern seaboard, all the land was owned by the women. Yes, they were and, the leaders. Yes, the clan mothers. And uh, But there, it was also a democracy, and that's where many of the first ideas about democracy came from, was from Native American society, where uh, the, the tribes, whenever there would be a major decision, uh, the entire tribe would come and and speak where everyone had a voice uh, from the eldest to the to the youngest and the women the clan mothers the ones who owned the property would choose who would speak for them usually men and they would uh, have tell them exactly what to say and what they you know through consensus what what it was that the people believed and if they did not say what what uh, was the consensus they'd yank them out and put somebody in who would and I think that's important uh, Hmm. Or note in this uh, as the election is unfolding this year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anyway, the the point is that 
that through the uh, looking at these books, uh, looking at other treatises and so forth, of the way the treatments and way uh, men and women throughout history and throughout time, throughout civilizations, various civilizations, you see that prior to the time of the Romans, that uh, that uh, around the world, indigenous societies, including including European culture, was matrilineal, matrifocal, or at least matrifocal, and that many of the greatest leaders were women, including war leaders. You know that there wasn't the distinction that there that there are now that you know men should do these roles, women should do these roles. You know, and separating them and so forth. Mm-hmm. It was more of a meritocracy. It was based upon what your talents were. So, because if the if the focus is on the tribe or the group. Right. Then you take who, whatever person has the best abilities to do a thing, that is the person who does the thing, whether it's a, a man or a woman. And so we say, uh, is you know, is it is it men's fault, is it women's fault? I think it's a cultural fault that there was the patriarchy, which is what we have now, which, which I think we're suffering under, which is crumbling, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is it fault? So whether it's individual men. You know, I think that in the book I give ample uh, psychological uh, profiles and so forth as far as, you know, the dark mother and things like that. All the things that go into the, the, the rearing of, of male children uh, that you have a, uh, a you know, I, don't, I don't know if a conspiracy is the right word, hmm. but there's a consensus of what are considered to I th- be. I think it's people, you know, it's sort of what we have. Uh, either we've been taught, but also what sort of fits us, and maybe there's a little, a little biology in there too. But you know, I like what you said about people uh, in the tribe; they're being chosen for what they're best at, what they're good at. And you know, did you know that um, you know when now that we have women in the military, that women make the best snipers? Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Right? They're quiet. Patience. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more to Jim Ewing about what's it like? What should it it be like to be a man or a woman? Can you hear my kitty cat meowing? The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleash, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleash, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. And we're back. You're listening to Between Heaven and Earth uh, Radio, and we're sitting here talking to Jim, Jim Ewing about what it is to be a man or woman. What is it that actually, um, it's an interesting topic. It really gets a lot of people talking, Jim. I, I um, was, as I mentioned earlier to you uh, before we got on the air, I actually shared this on Facebook. If you guys are out on Facebook, uh, you can go to 
Facebook between heaven and earth and post some comments there. Um, people are actually posting comments on my personal page and I've got, uh, uh, it's interesting. I basically ask, are men and women truly equal? And posted the, what we talked about earlier in the introduction. And I asked, you know, what's your view on how to be a guy or a gal in a way that works? And, and I, let me, let me share a little, Jim, would you like to hear some of the comments? I mean, this is sort of right up, up on your, these are your readers, right? Yes. <laughs> your audience. Um, so one of them was women try very hard to balance work, home and family. Not too sure. This is from a woman. Not too sure if I feel we are equal just yet due to the fact that when we voice our opinions and stand in our truth, we are still called names and men are not. Do you have any comments on that? Yes, uh, that is, I think, a result of uh, stereotypes that um, the leave it to beaver stereotype. Mm. You know, we talk about one of the problems, and uh, I mentioned in the book, is about archetypes and failed archetypes. And we have a number of failed archetypes, both for, for men and women. For example, uh, as you said in the, in the preamble to this show, uh, about Sleeping Beauty and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, you go spend your whole life waiting for, you know, Prince Charming or whatever. Right. And the same way with women in the workplace, uh, there's a lot of resentment toward women, mainly because of fear. If you look at the statistics, and I go into a fair amount of statistics in the book about uh, women uh, in society today, you see that, that our society is really in denial about the growing power and influence of women that when you look at the graduation mm-hmm. rates in college, you see more women are graduating with college degrees now than men. And as a consequence, you have now more women who are enter- entering managerial uh, jobs than, than men because of that higher education. And also women are getting more money. I mean, even though there is still the disparity of 80 cents to the dollar, that's at the ent- through the, the entire spectrum of pay. If you look at actually managerial jobs, and uh, where they're leading to, you see women getting ever higher and higher income. That's wonderful. That's wonderful to hear, you know, that, that they are getting higher and higher income. You know, I, I don't think I'm that old, but, uh, oh, I'm getting older. But I guess back in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, when I was working uh, as, a, as a manager, I was uh, directing software development teams. Um, I found out that I was making, they have, you know, when you have a job class that, that you know, you're, I don't know, the project manager or project leader, whatever it is, they have a, a and this is a fairly large company, they have a s- salary range. And I found out that I was below the range. Mm-hmm. So I go to my boss and I tell him, you know, and I found out I'm, I'm making less than the salary range. I didn't know what, you know, they're men and women there. So, so you know what they did? They gave me a raise. You know what he, and you know what they gave me? What? They gave me the bottom of the range. Oh. <laughs> right. They just gave me the bottom of the range. So it, it's interesting, too. That, and, you know, what, and I have to say that um, that job class that I was in had probably more men than women. So it, it was interesting. I, I felt the, that discrimination. And I didn't think we would have that discrimination. You know, here we are in the 80s and the 90s, but I, I still mm-hmm. felt it. But it, I've, I've watched it change over the years. I've watched... Um, you know, certainly there's so many more women out there working. Back when I was working, again, you know, women, uh, everybody, all the women thought they had to wear suits to go to work. And that's what you wore. And now, you know, women can be more women and wear what they want and still move up, move up in the, in the world. Um, you know, I think, though I think there is a little bit of a, an issue there with, you know, as a woman, when you're in the workforce, I think what the comment here was, uh, if you stand up and make your voice known and and be more, say, aggressive, so to speak, or more like a guy, then you're seen as, you know, the B word. Right. And, you know, so you know, where do all these, these concepts come from? What is it that... Uh, well, it's a workplace culture, if you look at you know, how workplaces are still on on uh, a lot of them, but that's changing or on 
outdated concepts where male oriented and so forth. And it's really kind of a lot of it's just locker room stuff. You know, it used to be, I remember mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, when I was working, uh, that, you know, they said more deals were made on the golf course in the boardroom. Oh, absolutely. Or the, you know, that's the boys club, right? The, old, yeah. the men's club. And, and that, that still, you know, that, that type of, of relationship though started to change in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. And nowadays, I don't think you can get away with that. You know, I don't mm-hmm. think for one thing, it's hard to, uh, hard to do that when, say, your CEO is a woman. Yes, absolutely. And so, those, those things, and so, but they still exist, but, and they're still held up as existing, but that does not mean that that's where it is. I think we've already reached a tipping point as far as women in the workplace that has shifted away from that. Totally. Actually, another comment on Facebook was uh, by another woman again, all the doors of possibilities are open to women and not just men. We are witnessing the real time evolution of this, which is so true. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I detail a, a good bit of uh, facts and statistics on that in the book, but because it's under the radar, it really is under the radar. I mean, you can see it if you if you go if you went to work now and you go into a, a room of business leaders, you're going to see a lot of women, and some of those women are very powerful women, and those yes. women are hiring people, and they're the ones who are setting the, the policies and procedures as far as the workplace is concerned. That has changed. It is changing. It's in the process of change. Well, so you know, I have a question then. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'm thinking about some of the powerful women that I know, um, you know, sort of from afar, but, uh, you know, hearing about the kinds of women they are, you know, and sometimes you see them on television. Um, do they still carry the, the women, the, the character, the character or the archetype of a woman, the femininity to their job? Or do, do you think they transform themselves into more of the male characteristics? I I don't really feel qualified to say mm-hmm. make a statement on that. I I can say that having worked for companies where there were very powerful women, that um, that they the ones that that I've known have done a pretty good job of being able to say you know you're fired, <laughs> mm, mm-hmm, right? Or, uh, or to uh, you know be be sensitive and thoughtful as far as you know if your work performance is not up to par. Uh, to, to put it in a, a, an objective professional manner, which is what you want your managers to do anyway. You don't want your managers to be, um, well, you, you, you can't create a hostile work environment, whether your boss is a male or female. Right. And it's, I think that's, uh, it's what you've been writing your book about that, you know, men and women have characteristics of both. I guess it's just a matter of what you pull out when you, and where and when you need it. Right, workplace culture is is uh, is going to vary from company to company, but I think that given the statistics as far as women in the workplace, their earning capacity, their educational level, and so forth, surpassing men, the women who are the high, high most highly qualified are not going to tolerate a workplace in which they feel uncomfortable. Sure, so they Absolutely. can command a salary and a job somewhere else. Exactly, and so what do you suggest that what we do? Um, you know, you have your guide. For men and and women, really. Right. Well, in in the book, you know, I put in there the, the the whole basis of the book. Although there's you know facts and figures, and also I you know I, I trace the history of uh, patriarchy and so forth, and how it's worked through since the Roman times, which is really how it came about. But the focus of the book really is on the exercises, and that's where uh, men and they are designed for men. Although I think you can change a few words and do it for women too. A lot of them, but. Um, is to for men to look at who they are and what they think and why they think what they do and whether that's what they ought to be thinking. Because one of the, the most salient facts of the book is far is attitudes are concerned, attitudes, beliefs, and ad, attitudinal beliefs. And that is that when uh, when questioned about the role of women, uh, you know, women give us certain answers and giving progressively more higher and higher percentages as far as, you know, should women work, should women do this and that and the other. Whereas uh, uh, women's, women's uh, uh, answers to those questions have changed, have evolved in, uh, in regard to this, this workplace and the power of women in the workplace and earning capacity and, and, you know, providing for themselves and so forth. So these attitudes have changed, but, when, but men's attitudes have not changed. 
so much. Hmm. Over the, since the 1970s, men still hold a lot of the same release in large uh, percentiles uh, unchanged from hmm. even when, like I was a teenager. So you, what you see is this huge disconnect between what women's attitudes toward work and, and their place in the, in the workplace, their place in the world, which is really, I think, based on real life experience, whereas men hold on to these old outdated ideas because that's what they were taught and that's what they believe. And so I think a lot of the problems that we have in society today is because of these uh, attitudinal beliefs, which which are lingering, and men are finding themselves. Well, what did I say? You know, what? <laughs> why she made at me? You know, because you made a dumb remark. Because it's not something that it just doesn't exist in the real world anymore. Right. And I, I, you know, like I, we were chatting before, and I was talking about you know Donald Trump is the perfect uh, exemplar of those outdated ideas. I mean, who in the world in this day and time can sit there and talk about women, all women? regardless of intellect or achievement or capability about whether they're a 10 or a nine, as far as physical appearance is concerned. Yeah. And even getting down to whether, you know, she's an eight from the chest up and a nine from, I mean, come on now, give me a break. I mean, right. this is, yeah. yeah we, and uh, he's gotten into a lot of trouble yes, with the Republican he, party over the things that he said to, um, I don't remember her name, but well, I think it was the host. Are designed to put women down and keep them down by men who are afraid of being put down themselves. And oh, so, they, that's interesting. so they step back into this attack mode. I mean, even the business about uh, 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 Megyn Kelly, uh, you know, bleeding from her eyes and, and quote, wherever else. I mean, what oh. kind of comment is that? <laughs> that's that horrible. Kind of physiological difference that's horrible. Women? That's horrible. And that even stems back, and I even mentioned in the book about, uh, about questions of menstruation, that in Native society, women are considered at their most powerful when it's their moon time. And yeah. that the reason that, uh, for example, even in sacred ceremony, that women are segregated from the group, although just a, a little bit of ways in a separate area during their moon time, is not mm -hmm. because they are, quote, unclean or anything like that. It's because of their power. Yes, because women women, women are tremendous. Yes, it's, a, it's amazing. They can be tremendously yes. powerful. Listen, I hate that you cut you off, but we're going to go to a break. And when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. It's, it's very fascinating. Thanks, Jim. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Mediumship Messages and Musings explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day -day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. Your Conscious Lifestyle on Steroids.
Om Times Radio, IOM FM. And welcome back. We are uh, here talking to Jim Ewing, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth, Conscious Living for Your Soul on the Om Times Radio Network. And we are at the half hour mark. And Jim, so I wanted to uh, tell people where they can reach you. Um, Jim's website is blueskywaters.com. Dot com blue skywaters.com right right Jim yeah and you can get his book redefining manhood a guide for men and those who love them uh, I, I believe on Amazon probably um, anywhere online I would assume is that correct that's correct all of them yeah so and Jim has quite a few sure. books out there um, you might be interested uh, I, I'm actually gonna grab the other one um, Conscious food, that you know, I actually asked for that one because that sounded so interesting to me. Jim, to tell us a little bit about that book. Well, conscious food. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, actually, I, I have sort of a, another life, which is <laughs> uh, I had an organic farm for seven years, and wow. um, and I got involved in a lot of farming organizations and so forth. And as a matter of fact, I uh, was president of the Mississippi Fruit and Vegetable Growers Association, and uh, I'm on the uh, USDA Southern uh, um, uh, Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Board and a bunch of things and uh, a lot of different boards and so forth. And um, what uh, it what got to me one day, I was out in the fields and it was so beautiful. It was one of those beautiful days when the sky was blue and the clouds were puffy and in you know, a light breeze, and it was just so gorgeous, and it was a spiritually powerful moment. I felt uh, at one with the earth, and that uh, you know all these beings, both plant beings and everything, was just uh, it was just such a beautiful moment. And I came inside the house, and there was on you know I saw online that there had been a massive recall for uh, something because of uh, uh, you know uh, E. coli and this and that and the other, and they were recalling eggs and all this kind of stuff, and they're saying this was going to kill you and blah blah blah. And I thought to myself, why or how did we come from uh, uh, food which is good and healthy for you, mm. uh, and 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 gives nourishment and life and gives you, I mean, every physical and spiritual and every way possible uh, abundance in life? How did it become? Uh, this this uh, dealer of death, where you're afraid of, of, of eating, eating. <laughs> and that even food that's marketed heavily, like GMOs, is artificial and you know yeah. has weird stuff. I mean, how did how did you get to what? Where did where? Did, how did we allow this to happen? Absolutely. And, and so I went, and so I did research on it, and that's where I found uh, in Robert McElmain's book Eve Seed, which is a wonderful book, which you you know. It's uh, mm-hmm. about women in history and agriculture and so forth. But anyway, he's the one that came up. He's a historian uh, who who made the assertion that women invented agriculture, and uh, and showed why, and mm-hmm. about how that was it was part of a whole complex of beliefs that um, of of the culture of groups uh, communities uh, belonging to the people in the community, the whole community much as tribes in Native America, where people uh, believe that, that there's a genuine spiritual connection to the land and that all kinds of uh, uh, goddesses, spirits, angels, mm-hmm. and so forth are on your side to help produce this food, which provides for all the people from the, from the youngest to the oldest, which also is the very same idea of democracy in Native America, that we all share in common these things. And there's within uh, the, the uh, essential nature of the group to make sure that that not only that we have a spiritual but a physical connection as well to the food that nourishes us in our society, and so uh, so you find that this is in prehistory. So what happened? And then so I go through in that book in Conscious Food and so forth about mm-hmm. how uh, you know Western we came up with our Western ideas through the Romans and that how even I went uh, delved into a lot of uh, even uh, early Christianity and so forth about. Um, you know the the ability of women to be disciples and so forth because mm-hmm. uh, women were spiritual leaders. It was goddess culture, sure. and it was only in the uh, in the Romans, you know, when um, that uh, the rewriting of the Bible took out all the chapters involving women and children, 
and their power and, and uh, so forth, and even even Jesus as a child, his growing up years, that uh, that it became the male uh, dominated view of this idea of love from God, which is the Old Testament view, being mercy, and that is uh, uh, love to be doled out based on merit or on judgment, as opposed to the New New Testament look, uh, which is Jesus's uh, original. Uh, view of love, meaning womb-like love, womb-like compassion. Mm, mm, a big difference mm. in the type of that uh, whole, yeah, ma- male, female yeah. thing well, come, comes comes into so play again. It all it all stems from. Of course, mm-hmm. then it ran smack dab against Native America when they came here and found uh, women being in charge and owning the property and so forth. So right, right, I, right. So, well, I so, you want to share that with your with our listeners. Conscious food, sustainable growing, and spiritual eating. That's another book that Jim has out there. Um, and you can get both the books right on Amazon, I, Barnes and Noble online, and I, they're they're wonderful books. A lot of very interesting material that gets you thinking. So, Jim, I wanted to also let people know about your Reiki shamanism. And spirits of the land at Kripalu. Right. So Jim's um, going to be out there uh, in Kripalu. Kripalu's in Massachusetts, um, Lennox, right? Yes, in the Berkshires. Yeah, so if you're out there, if you're around there or you like to go to Kripalu, uh, Jim's going to be there September 13th to the 18th. Is there anything else they need? Oh, you could go to kripalu.org. K R I P A L U.org. Yeah, it's, it's, I really enjoy it. This is my third year to teach there, and it's a week long. Uh, yeah, sounds great. Reiki yeah. shamanism. So, you know, go meet Jim. He's he's in Massachusetts. So let me move on to um, a little bit about what I'm doing. Actually, I wanted to let everybody know I'm looking for sponsors for this show. We've had a couple, uh, actually one already. So if you want to place an ad on this on this. Um, uh, on our program, I'd be very happy to do that for you. You just email me at radio at lmk88.com. Let me know that if you're interested. Uh, so we reach uh, Om Times Network, Om Times Radio, and Om Times Magazine reaches over 2 million people, uh, both on social media. They've got a wonderful, wonderful uh, extensive reach to a group of people that are just like you out there listening, conscious living people. Um, Conscious Living for Your Soul. And I will be also teaching Developing Your Intuition, Level 1, in person. I do this once a year, and it's coming up November 7th and 8th, and that's going to be at the Doubletree Hotel in Tarrytown, New York. Uh, Tarrytown is hmm, about 30 minutes north of New York City. It's up in beautiful Westchester County, easily uh, accessible by the train from New York City. So developing your intuition level one. And what you're going to learn in that class is how to make your intuition happen when you want, on what you want, and get detailed information. It's a whole weekend. We go into all kinds of wonderful ways to get your intuition going from scratch. I show you the process. If you feel you're intuitive or not, this works. And we go through that. We have a little metaphysics in there, but we also have a lot of psychobiology, the science behind intuition, and how you can get yourself up to the level of being what people might even consider psychic. But um, it, it's really amazing. We've got a lot of people have gone through it, and they absolutely love it. And uh, if you're not able to make that class in person, we also do it online. And if you go to intuitiononly.com, you can find you can get a few uh, free videos that will give you an introduction. Actually, some of the best, the nice, the greatest stuff I've got, um, I give away. And uh, you can go to intuitiononly.com and sign up and get those free videos. Uh, one other thing, I'm going to be in Denver. I've been mentioning this for a while. I'm giving the keynote speech out there at the Body Mind Spirit Expo, in Denver, September 12th, 1 p.m. Come out and see me. I'd love to meet you if you're out there in Denver, Colorado. So, And we've got a bunch of things coming up soon, a uh, lot of great guests. And uh, we're, we're actually getting booked out through December. We've got just people from who are all walks of spirituality, positive thinking, um, wonderful thought leaders, and how to make your life better through your own self-help, right? So... So, Jim, I wanted to get back to talking about, uh, you know, how is it that we can 
figure out how to be. One of the things that um, we had just a, a couple minutes here, um, and maybe we could continue after the break. Um, from you know, woman's standpoint, you know, being the stay-at-home mom, one of the things that happens is, is you know, you go from the career where the career that you have, and, and I think that when you go into the working world as a woman, you know, you do have a lot of the characteristics that are part of you that are more, quote, male-oriented oriented when you work. And then, of course, the stay-at-home mom becomes more the the female feminine characteristics of the nurturer and so on. Uh, but it sort of seems like it's difficult to do both. Do, what, what, do you have any suggestions on how a woman can approach that? Part of it is, is sharing the load. You know, uh, if, uh, if, if the part of the changes that are taking place right now are changes from, uh, typical male female relationships as far as, uh, marriage and children and so forth. And, uh, men are more and more, uh, expected. I mean, if you want to be in a relationship with a woman now, then you have to share the load. And that is, uh, it means uh, co-parenting and doing all the chores and errands and things like that. I mean, that's just part of it. Yeah, uh, you, I don't think you could do it all. Um, I think it's it's difficult for any one person to to do it all. Uh, and I, I think also the you know the attitudes and at work have to change. A little. And I think they are. You know, allowing uh, both men and women obviously family leave and considering considering that it's, it's important in our society that we have men who do share the load as far as parenting is concerned and i do uh in the book extend uh, a good bit of not a uh, good bit of uh, it about it was called uh the father wound mm. and the mother and that is that when uh and it's, it's interesting that virginia wolf uh mentioned the same thing that when you give care giving strictly to women, then uh, men grew up with uh, odd, with dangerous ideas and even violent uh, oh, that's interesting. attitudes toward, toward so women. So we really, we really have to get men to participate in taking care of things at home. Yes. I love that. It's, well, we're uh, we're going to go to break it's, again. It's, so it's, it's so when, we, when we come back in a couple minutes, um, let's continue this conversation. I think it's fascinating. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jollish Hour. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. And welcome back. This is Lisa Kay, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth. 
uh, Conscious Living for Your Soul. And uh, I wanted to just remind you that you can reach me at lmk88.com. Uh, that's my website. And if you have any questions or you have suggestions, you want to sponsor spot on this show, uh, just go to lmk88.com. You can contact me there as well and go to the contact form. Just send me an email. And I, I really answer all of them. It's quite amazing uh, that I can get through all those, but I do. Uh, so that's the best way to connect with me. And if you have any other comments or you have questions for our uh, guests, uh, I can certainly pass those on as well, uh, lmk88.com. So we're here with Jim Ewing, and we're talking about men and whim, women and, ha- and the roles that they play. And it, we were um, talking about from the women's side, and I guess it kind of goes back and forth. You can't talk about the guy side without talking about the woman's side. And there, I wanted to read another comment that was on Facebook, and this is from a guy. So it's interesting to hear both sides. Uh, let's see. He says, yes, women have grown into greater possibilities. Men ha- have men have had it all before and nowhere to grow. Uh, if they take on items that women did, they are called sissy or cross-dressers, weak, not men. And the more sensitive men become, he says, which is good, the woman benefits, yet they do not find the male as attractive anymore. So... Uh, that's interesting. I thought that was an interesting perspective. Do you, what are your what are your thoughts on what he said? I think it depends on what types of uh, women or attitudes uh, you find attractive in women. If if you think that women want you to be macho and feel all those things, then you're going to not want to do the things that make you feel like you're not being not macho and so forth. That's why. I, in the book, I have the, the exercises that don't tell people, don't tell men how to be or anything. What they are designed to do is so that a person can answer the questions and see why he does the things he does, and and how he came about those decisions. You know, for example, if you have a real macho view of life, going through actually, you say, "Well, that came across because of my." high school gym teacher or my father or my uncle or somebody mm-hmm. or even a you know drill instructor or guys in the army or whatnot. But uh, what it does is it puts it out in front of you to see, okay, that's where I got these attitudes, and then are they the ones that I want to keep? Now that I know I have these attitudes, they still serve me. Right. You know, lots of times we have disconnects between what we say and what we think and also what we, what we think mm-hmm. and what we do. But what about what what about okay? Suppose they realize okay, I am this whole person. I have men, my masculine and feminine qualities within me, and I just want to be or express whatever those are. But now society, um, you know, it makes it hard for for you to express it. I think that's kind of what this gentleman was saying: is that now I go out and I try to be who I am, uh, maybe the sensitive male, and then I get the, you know. Is there a conversation we can have with other people? Yeah, I think that that if it's kind of like the target, what 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 people are you talking to? If you're going to go uh, be sensitive and thoughtful and caring, mm-hmm. then you're probably not going to find that in a bar in a sports bar. <laughs> you know, right, right. The Both is, men and women, right? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. uh, aren't you setting yourself up for failure? I mean. Maybe you don't feel confident enough to hold these things. You're just trying them out, and then secretly you want to be shot down. I don't know. I mean, or, or maybe what we have to do is, you know, you play different roles at different times, um, mm-hmm. and and then I I think for me personally as a woman, I like to see both sides of a guy, um, and I could understand. You know, women are, I think, biologically attracted. You know, and this makes sense psychobiologically or sociobiologically. Uh, that you know we're geared to find, to be attracted to someone who's going to take care of us and protect us and so on. So what are those characteristics might be the strong male, the the male who's the leader, the male who's got courage. And but at the same time, um, I think you know then if so if a guy is too much like then that, then maybe that they're not the kind of guy who's going to bring you roses, right? 
not going to bring you flowers. I, I, so. I really, you know, that I, I really hate to do hypotheticals like that because you're talking about a, a construct, a mental construct, not real people. And mm-hmm. I think that people who, that people have a range of emotions and they have a range of capacities, and that you find exactly if you want to find people of like mind, you keep looking until you find those people in the situations in which you feel comfortable. If you're going in the places where you know that your attitudes are not going to be met with success, then, uh, you know, you're, you're just sabotaging yourself. Mm, mm-hmm. So, what, you know, what, to my mind, that's more of, and, and I think probably, you know, like I said, the exercises will tell you, uh, you know, what attitudes you have. Can you walk. give us one? Could you share one with us? Well, I'll just give a very yeah, give, give one. Yeah, a, give one of your favorite ones. <laughs> a real simple, short one. And that is, uh, and this is very superficial, but I think it kind of gives you an idea of, of something very simple. It says, men and women often telegraph their interests, personas, or pretensions through their style of clothing. It's true that the Fortune 500 CEO might on occasion dress like a pool boy or a garage mechanic might clean up real good in a Brooks Brothers suit. It's true, too, that our clothing our interests may not coincide, especially by necessity. Still, designers speak of one's look or style. Ralph Lauren, for example, has its black label, purple label, or polo, described by the New York Times as representing every conceivable American type, which it lists as the Hollywood glamour boy, the Newport club man, the Montana rancher, the Honolulu beach boy, the Nebraska trucker, the California Mm -hmm. easy rider, the Montauk surfer, the Connecticut preppy, the Nantucket Trustafarian, among others. All right, it goes on, you know, Trustafarian. That. and it says, what does your look, what does it say about you? Does it reflect who you really are? Is it something mm. you crafted yourself or merely adopted? If so, when? As a child, as an adult, when and why? And also list the men and women in your life who contributed to this to this look and uh and it goes on about that but hmm. a lot of times you know you you dress the way you feel comfortable right yes you take a look at uh, for, just take a step back that's what these exercises do is you just take a step back and objectively look at various all these aspects of your life to see why you do the things you, you to do and and if you want to continue to do them or not it doesn't say it doesn't say not to do them well, it's interesting, saying, though. I think, um, you know, just thinking about myself, about uh, I dress because I want to be comfortable, uh, and I'm not a girly girl. Um, but at the same time, I think there are also aspects of, you know, be be quite open and honest here. Um, when I do dress up in a very very feminine way, and it's uh, some women like this. I I find it uncomfortable. I actually don't like drawing so much attention to my body. And then having, you know, guys, you know, kind of looking at me more as just my body and not me. And I think that's where I came from. And uh, but at the same time, I, you know, it'd be nice to look nice, too. So then I run into this sort of, you know, this dichotomy of, you know, what, where do I, what do I do? I think, um, you know, that's that was sort of my introspection, what came out of that. Mm-hmm. And um so I think I think we're always in this tug of war between what it is, who we are, trying to express who we are. I think that's what you're saying, looking inside, contemplating and, and introspecting about, well, what is it I would like to be? Who am I? What are all my different aspects? And then putting it out there and being okay with that. But, but then also, what does the world reflect back? And being okay with what is reflected back. Whatever that is, is that what you're is that what you're saying that I? Right. That's that's one. If you if you look at uh, let's consider lines that transect a circle. You have a circle in the middle, and you have lines going through it every different direction. Yes. And what these uh, what these exercises are basically, you're the circle. That's mm-hmm. you and your entirety. And each one of those circles is a uh, each one of those lines is a test to see where you fall in that circle, so that you can determine. By various means, both by clothing, by attitudes, by beliefs, by uh, what, uh, what you, you know, ideals, things that you can look at yourself and decide, hey, you know, all my life I've been acting like this when I don't even, that's not even really me. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, yes. And and then once you know that what is really you, then you can say that's okay, right? right? And and, and own that, and then that and that's what you put forth, right? Rather than, I think what I'm trying to reflect by what you're saying, rather than being forced or molded into something that you're not by external pressures, right? And just kind of going through life on the script, rather than saying, "Hey, I don't believe all this. I don't. I don't believe." the things that were taught to me. I realized that, that, you know, I've been operating on, on a system of belief that really doesn't apply to where I am right now. Right. Oh, this is, you know, this is so fascinating. <laughs> I love it. I, you know, again, I, I looked at the book and I was like, well, I'm not a guy, you know, uh, well, you know but, the subtitle is a guide for men and those who yeah, love. Exactly. I, and you know, those of you who are listening, read the book, connect with Jim because it really gets you thinking. And, you know, we just, I just got a comment out there, um, on Facebook and thank you. Uh, oops. I lost it. Uh, thank you for commenting out there. But uh, somebody said, it's, you know, this is a great topic. And it really is. Um, it, it, you know, it got me thinking it's, it's going to make me go back and introspect and, and read more of your book, Jim. I thank you so much for being on the show with us. We're at the end of our show. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's been great. It's been wonderful having you. It's created a lot of conversation, a lot of thinking. And, uh, you know, you'll have to come back and sure. we'll talk more. Sure. Happy to. Wonderful. I'm Lisa Kay, and you've been listening to Between Heaven and Earth, Conscious Living for Your Soul. And we're here every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune in next time right here on Own Times Radio. Angel blessings to everyone. See you next time. Thanks. Thanks.